Hi there and welcome. This is Vince of VincePrep.com reporting to you live from New York City for, uh, about the Columbia MBA application essays for the incoming class of 2016. The essays have been changed and the essays I think are, are pretty exciting. I think Columbia still represents a very good first school to start in terms of your application. Um, several reasons for that, one of which is that there is a rolling admissions process. That's the biggest one. So the sooner you submit it, the sooner it's read. It's first come, first serve. It's like an airline. Uh, seats fill up as applications come in. And you, if, if Columbia is your dream school, you certainly want to apply and get it in as soon as possible. If Columbia is one of your dream schools, there's other strategies about uh, how, to, how to deal with early decision. Those are, those are tips and advice I always giving to my clients. And uh, if you're interested in those tips, uh, fill out my intake form and perhaps we can work together. Anyway, Columbia is a great uh, business school. I used to work at Columbia University. I was on the verge of attending Columbia for my master's in education. In the end, I decided to go downtown to NYU. I wanted to learn production rather than theory in the education area of cognitive science and design for education and using media to teach um, distance learning and stuff like these videos in my website. That's what I studied in my, at NYU. Columbia has a similar program. I chose to go to NYU. My point is I've been admitted to Columbia. I've lived near the campus. I've worked there for months. I visit my students who are at Columbia Business School before, during, and after their studies. And you can also take a look at VincePrep.com to see my results for Columbia. In short, it is a school that I know well in terms of culture and also admissions trends uh, for almost 11 years. And, as, and you can see my results on my website since I went independent, which was 2007. Let's look at the uh, essay questions for this year. There's a short answer that's 100 characters where you're asked to identify your post-MBA goal. 100 characters, very short. My advice here is don't start with this short answer. Answer essay one first, and then have time over weeks uh, to, to make your answer more and more concise until it can fit to 100 characters. It's very hard to write 100 characters initially. Don't limit yourself or put that much pressure on yourself. Instead, spend 500 words or more fully answering the why MBA and goals question in essay one, and then again, gradually work on making it increasingly concise to answer the short essay. The biggest risk with this short answer is that ad admissions committee members may feel that your plans are unrealistic Take a look at VincePrep.com. I have some explanations of what I think might be unrealistic goals. Um, I just come off the AGAC conference, which was held at Wharton this year, this year being 2013. We're going to be at Columbia and NYU Stern. Next year, Columbia is our main host for the next year's conference of AGAC. AGAC is the Association of International Graduate Admissions Counselors, people who do what I do. In short, I'm on the board Planning these conferences is, is very fun. It allows us to talk to each other as industry practitioners, as counselors and consultants, and also talk directly to admissions officers to find common ground where we can advise our clients. Uh, and, and we and the admissions officers basically share the same goal, is that you, the applicant, can identify and find your best fit with the program that best helps you achieve your goals. So you want to show, uh, we also talk to career uh, officers, career service center directors, at the AGAT conference, there was an excellent panel. We were able to learn, including Columbia as career service director was there, and we were able to understand what they might feel are unrealistic goals. And you can look at my website again for more detailed explanation of, of, of those issues. So for essay one, this is why MBA, why now, why Columbia? You want to analyze your career progress briefly. Again, initially, don't worry about word limits. Uh, when you're brainstorming, uh, your essays or you're in, you know, you're, you're doing um, ideation or creation of the story. Ignore the word limit, but you do need to summarize or analyze your career. Certainly creating a, an excellent resume or updating your resume would help you with that. Analyzing where you are now, figuring out where you want to go in the future, and then identifying the gap between your experience and your goals, and then clarifying why an MBA is the right degree for you as opposed to some other graduate degree. Or, or no degree at all, why you need this degree, why now is the ideal timing. In other words, you're ready, 
uh, you have enough skill to take advantage of the MBA and that, the, and that Columbia is, in fact, the best school for you. There are other places to talk about Columbia in Essay 2 and in Essay 3. So in this essay, you want to minimize the risk of, of admissions officers thinking that you're applying too soon or too late. You can look at the uh, class profile, which I put at, on a copy and pasted from Columbia's website, onto vinceprep.com. You can take a look at the profile. You can understand average of five years of working experience. That is an average. The range of ages goes up to 30 or 32. Um, so it's not impossible to get in 30 or above. Um, it's rare, but it's not impossible. Um, and there are people, about 1%, who are admitted to Columbia with less than one year of work experience. It's unusual, but it's possible. Again, the average is five. So you want to show that you're ready, you've got enough experience, you can take advantage of the opportunity. And also here, I guess my other real advice is focus on Columbia's intellectual capital. When I say intellectual capital, I'm talking about professors, research centers, things like the Eugene Lang Center for Entrepreneurship. Those are the unique resources, the curriculum resources. That's where Columbia spends its money, faculty salaries. That's where Columbia is trying to emphasize its value. Of course, Columbia emphasizes in the other essays and everywhere on its website and materials and marketing the New York City location, but that's not all they have to offer. This essay is your chance to show and prove that you understand and value the actual curriculum and intellectual capital resources that Columbia does have. It's not just about the ranking. It's not just about the network. It's not just about the Ivy League name of Columbia. You also sincerely care about the MBA itself as a degree and Columbia University MBA program as an academic experience. Admissions officers are very sensitive to make sure that that's in fact the case. This is your essay to minimize any misperceptions they may have and prove to them that you really understand the MBA as a degree and Columbia Business School as an academic experience. Essay 2 is an interesting essay, a new question, uh, how, in, how New York City impacts your Columbia experience. In past years, this question has asked about specific things like the master classes and also the executives and residents program. My advice to you is to do your due diligence, to do your homework, to understand masters, uh, uh, masters, sorry, master classes, and, exec and executive and residence. You may want to mention those in your essay if you find a good match or a good fit. You also want to be reaching out to current students and recent alumni or even senior alumni to add real names here, people that are in New York City as Columbia students or as Columbia graduates who are going to best prepare you to achieve the goals that you explain in, in your short answer essay and in essay one. You want to minimize the risk of admissions officers thinking that you do not understand how Columbia utilizes New York City as a classroom and as a business incubator. So that's essay two. Again, definitely is going to require time and research. One more tip about this, definitely reach out to current students and recent alumni. But don't be rude. Plan ahead. You've got to realize that if, if there's a student at Columbia whose name is on a website as a club leader or something, or if someone has put their name and email contact information on the Columbia website, it's out there for the public. You've got to realize that they are getting lots and lots of inquiries. Over 5,000 people a year apply to Columbia Business School. So don't contact them two days before the deadline or two days before you plan to send your essay and expect them to help you. Um, Remember the give and take of networking and make sure you're off also hopefully offering something in return for their time. Because they are also, why are they putting their name and website on the, and email on the website? They're also trying to build their network as well. So don't forget to make a real value proposition and a real actual pitch. Ask a short and specific question that they can directly answer or they can introduce you to someone else who can directly answer your question. So do your homework, do it politely, and do it soon. <laughs> All right. Um, essay three, surprise your cluster peers. I also like this new essay. This element of surprise, if you took it literally, you might think you have to say something that Amanda Carlson and her admissions committee readers have never heard before. I think that's probably impossible. Again, 5,400 something applicants last year, 
um, 5,000 plus essays to read. Are you going to say anything truly surprising? Probably not. Everything's probably been said. It's a question of saying something. Surprise, remember, is something that is unexpected from you. So think about a contrast here, a contrast story. To use an example, uh, this is an old example, but it's one I happen to know well. Think about Steve Jobs. If you look it up on YouTube, millions of views, his graduation speech at Stanford University from several years ago. He talks about the fact that after he dropped out of Reed College in Oregon, um, he started taking calligraphy classes, and that that's why Macintosh computers in the early days put a lot of emphasis on fonts and, and style. And he talks about the influence of calligraphy, which is analog, right, <laughs> ink on paper, into a computer. That's surprising. You wouldn't think that this tech guy um, knows calligraphy or does something so seemingly old-fashioned. That's a surprise. So if Steve Jobs were alive and trying to get a Columbia MBA, he might write a surprising essay about his calligraphy class.